Nearly every presentation can really benefit from some slides that help support your speaking points. But when you're spending your time getting ready to give that presentation, it can be hard to find the time it takes to actually build the slides. If you're a keynote user, you want to save time in the production process so that you can feel confident in what you're going to say. Hi, I'm Andrew Childress for Envato Touch Plus, and in this course, I'll teach you 15 of my favorite tips for Apple's Keynote. This is one of the easier to use presentation softwares and is one of my favorite choices for building those supporting slides. In this course, one of the common themes that you'll see is that you can use pre-built templates from Envato Elements to really cut down the time it takes to produce your presentation. When you use a pre-built template, you get ideas and a head start for building a presentation so that you can spend less time creating the slides and more time getting ready to present. Come along with me in this course to see 15 of my favorite tips to create slides in Apple Keynote and spend less time than ever building a presentation. Just like any other project, when you're building a keynote presentation, preparation is key. That's why it's so important to choose the right template. The goal is to find a pre-built slide deck with layouts and designs that are built to support your message. Then all you have to do is drop in your own content and get ready to deliver a great presentation. Most of us are too busy to build slides from scratch, and it isn't always easy. Fortunately, using custom keynote templates, you don't have to do all the hard work. Keynote includes a collection of pre-built custom themes to help you get started. For simple presentations, these are nice, but if you're looking to truly master Keynote and build professional presentations, you should check out the amazing templates available on Envato Elements. Envato Elements is a resource for creatives that features presentation templates, photos, video, audio, and more. For a low monthly fee, you're granted unlimited downloads as you browse thousands of high quality options. Let's jump over to Elements here, and as you can see, they offer a huge library of thousands of Keynote templates. There are actually so many choices that it can be a little overwhelming at first. But not to worry, all it takes is a little planning. When I'm building Keynote presentations, I find that it's super helpful to outline my key points and ideas in advance. You don't have to get really detailed, but having an idea of where you're going truly does help you get there. Once you have an idea of your main topics and ideas, you'll find that choosing a template gets much easier. For example, if you're trying to pitch potential investors on your new startup company, a pitch deck keynote template would be right for you. Or if you're sharing data and want your audience to visualize it, try an infographic template. The goal is to match messaging with the visual aid you choose to support it in the form of your keynote template. If you have specific categories and keywords you want to browse, type them into the search box at the top and press enter. That will then narrow down your results by keyword to help you find exactly what you're looking for. Let's say for our purposes, I just want to use a general purpose template suited for a simple intro. I'd like to find an option with diverse slide layouts that I can use for multiple topics. So instead of searching, I'll scroll down through these options here. Elements offers countless design options as you're seeing here. Okay, this keynote presentation sounds like it might work. The title fits with my goals and the thumbnail image here looks good. To see more detail, I'm going to go ahead and click on the thumbnail image. Elements will take me to a new screen with a detailed description and additional preview images. I can browse through these and decide if I'm ready to download the Keynote template. When I'm ready to download, I'll go ahead and click on this download option here in the top right corner of the screen. This window will pop up asking me to enter a license use for the file. This box is a reminder of how I license this template for use. Remember, even if you stop subscribing to Elements in the future, you can still use files you've downloaded for their original purpose. I can enter a custom license usage or choose an option I've used before as you're seeing me do here. When I'm done, I'll go ahead and click Add and Download. Elements will download the Keynote template, typically as a zip file. Once it finishes downloading, let's go ahead and extract the file and open it up. I'll click on one and then Keynote will launch and just like that, we're ready to start building our Keynote presentation with our own custom theme. Thanks for watching. Slide layouts are the quickest way to change the look and feel of your Keynote presentation. Layouts are really just arrangements of placeholders that you can drop your content into. This can include text, photos, videos, charts, and more. As you build each slide in your presentation, think about the best ways to visually showcase the points you're making. Sometimes a simple collection of bullet points will suffice. Other times, you really need a chart or photo to help clarify things. Keep this in mind as you choose a layout, and let's learn how. I'm working in the Quantum Multipurpose Keynote presentation, which is available from Envato Elements. In a pre-built professional template like this, there are really two ways to change slide layouts. The first is to use the layout designs already built into Keynote. I'm viewing this slide here, and I want to add a brand new slide right after it. To do this, I'll come up here to the upper left corner of the menu bar and click Add Slide. This dropdown will appear, and as you can see, it shows off an assortment of pre-built layout ideas. Suppose I want to feature an exciting new photo with a quote beside it. 
A good option for this is content with caption, so I'll go ahead and click on that thumbnail. Keynote will instantly create a new slide using that layout. Now, even the pre-built layout can be changed. For example, I can make the image placeholder larger by clicking and dragging on the corner of the blue placeholder box. And I'll move the text boxes by clicking and dragging to rearrange them on the slide. These options are great for standard edits and changes, but with Elements Keynote templates, they aren't the only options. Each and every Keynote template from Elements includes truly unique slide layouts, pre-built and ready for use. For example, the Quantum template we're using now includes 40 custom layouts. To view these, we can simply scroll down in this sidebar on the left to preview each design. For greater detail, simply click on a thumbnail and Kino will open the slide for editing. I'll click through a few of these and as you can see, this elements template includes design options that simply aren't available with Keynote's built-in layouts. This template has a sleek agenda layout, a meet the team slide, and even a collection of charts and infographics. And every other elements Keynote template you try out will include this same type of flexibility and variety. Templates with specific themes will include slide layouts built around that theme. This is why it's so important to outline and plan your presentation in advance. Once you do this, choosing themes and layouts that match is really a breeze. One other easy tip will make your presentation building process easier. Suppose you're using a custom layout and want to create another slide exactly like it. Rather than selecting or even building the layout again, you can simply copy and paste a slide. Let me show you how. On my sidebar here on the left side, I'll click to select the slide I want to copy. Then on my keyboard, I'll press Command C to copy it. To paste, I'll click on the slide immediately above where I want it in sequence. For example, if I want to paste this in a slide 7, I'll click on slide 6. Then I'll hit Command V to paste it. Keynote will paste in the slide with an identical layout and I can start editing it. That's it. As you can see, custom Keynote templates from Elements offer a ton of amazing useful layout options that you can use in any presentation. Thanks for watching. When you're building a Keynote presentation, efficiency is key. Your project may grow to include dozens of different slides. It can get really time consuming to make edits to each one. That's why it pays to find techniques that help you make changes faster. Suppose you're creating a keynote presentation and you want to apply an identical edit to every slide. Let's learn how. I have a presentation here and as you can see, it's rather lengthy. I want to add my fictional firm's logo to every slide in the deck. With over 50 slides, I'd rather not think about having to make the identical change over and over again. Fortunately, with editing Keynote's master slides, I don't have to. Think of master slides as a kind of hierarchy. Each slide layout is represented by a master slide, and an edit to the master slide automatically applies to all of the slides below it. To demonstrate, I'll go ahead and navigate to the master view. I'll come up to the view tab at the top of my screen, and on the drop down, select edit master slides. Watch as the sidebar changes from a preview of each slide to a preview of each type of slide. You'll see title slide, full picture, title and content, and more. This is where the flexibility of Envato Elements keynote templates come in. Master layouts are carefully crafted to be easily edited. All you need to know is the type of slide you want to edit. Thinking back to my presentation, title and content represents the body of the slides. I'll click on that option here on the sidebar. What I'm now doing is editing the master of every slide with this layout. Whether I have one such slide or 300, any change I make here will be reflected on each and every individual slide. As mentioned, I want to add my logo to one corner. To do this, I'll come up here to the center menu and click on the media dropdown. Keynote will present a list of options for importing new content. I like having the flexibility of a browse window, so I'll click choose here. Keynote shows me this explore window, and I can browse to where the logo image is stored on my Mac. Once I find it, I'll click once to select it, and then choose insert in the lower right. Keynote will quickly import the image onto the center of the slide canvas. As with any image, I can click and drag to move it around the slide, and resize it by pulling on one of the corner handles. I'll make a couple of adjustments as you're seeing me do here. Once it's placed, it's time to see how it looks in the body of the presentation. To do this, let's go back up to the View tab and select Exit Master Slides. I'll start navigating through my slides here, and as you can see, the logo is neatly placed in the identical spot on each one. The Master Slides edit only took a few seconds, whereas you could spend hours trying to manually edit every slide. Remember, if you have slides with different layouts, this first master edit won't apply to them. But all you need to do is replace these same steps for each master in your presentation. This is one of my favorite tricks for efficiently editing slides in bulk. Thanks for watching. When you think of giving a keynote presentation, you probably picture yourself standing in front of slides and talking. While that's a big part of it, sometimes it can be really useful to add music to your slides. This can be for background music as you speak, or as the only sound if you're sharing your presentation without narration. Whatever the purpose, adding music to Apple Keynote presentations is easy and a perfect way to make them memorable. I'm working in a Keynote presentation here. 
As you can see, it's a marketing presentation for a property I'm trying to sell. My idea is to post this keynote presentation online for potential buyers to view. I won't be standing in front of them and speaking, so I think some music would keep them engaged and interested in my pitch. Keynote will allow me to easily add music to play in the background. Let me show you how. Before we get started, remember to always be careful when adding music to your slides. This is really for two reasons. First, it can be distracting if it's too loud and drowns out the slide content. But also, you should avoid just adding music to slides because of copyright concerns. While your favorite song might go great with your slides, you probably aren't licensed to use it. That's where Envato Elements comes in. Elements has recently added a library of music and audio that you can use in all of your projects. Let's jump over to Elements here and browse in the music section. As you can see, Elements already has thousands of royalty-free music tracks to choose from. As I scroll, you can easily recognize the diversity of sounds available. Remember my point earlier about choosing music that isn't overpowering. Soft piano music always matches that description, so I'll go ahead and type that up here in the search box and press enter. Elements will return a list of matching results. It pays to try them out first, and to do that, I'll just click on the play button beside a file I want to try out. Elements will play a preview, and if I like it, I'll go ahead and download it. To do that, simply click on this download arrow on the far right side. Elements will ask for a license use, essentially asking how you intend to use the music. Enter one in, then click add and download. Remember, even if you stop subscribing to Elements, you'll keep your licenses for all projects you've downloaded in the past. The file will download, and now let's go ahead and extract it to make it usable. Okay, I'll jump back over to my keynote presentation, and now it's time to add the audio. I'll start on a slide and then come up here to the Insert tab. Then, on the drop-down, I'll click on Choose. Next, I'll browse to where the downloaded song is stored on my computer, click to select it, and then choose Insert. Keynote will drop this audio onto the slide. I'll click on the sound icon on the slide, and you'll see this audio sidebar open up over on the right. Here, I can make edits to the audio. There's a volume slider, and these repeat options here at the bottom specify if I want the file to play once or over and over again. There are also options to trim audio. This is great if the song is lengthy and you only want to play a portion. To trim the audio, simply click on these handles and drag to select only the time window you want to play, as you're seeing me do here. Finally, I can choose whether to start the music automatically or upon clicking by checking this box here at the bottom. That's it. You can see how easy it is to add great background music to your keynote presentation. Thanks for watching. As the old saying goes, pictures are worth a thousand words. The same can be said for your keynote presentations. Virtually any slide deck will benefit from including images. They help to illustrate points and add interest. And in Keynote, they're very easy to add. Of course, the first step is to select images to add to your presentation. You might have photos of your own to showcase, and that's always a great option. But suppose you want to use a series of stock photos in your presentation. You can't simply go online and find random images to add because of copyright concerns. Make sure that you're using photos that you're fully licensed to use. As an Envato Elements member, you're in luck. Elements now offers a giant selection of royalty-free stock photos to all members. You can download as many as you want and add them to your keynote slides. I'm working on a slide here and I want to add two images to it, one of a locomotive and one of a ship. The first step is to choose the photos to add. Let's jump over to Elements here and browse to the Photos section. Since I know what I'm looking for, I'll go ahead and type locomotive up here in the search box at the top. I'll hit enter and Elements will return hundreds of stunning photos. I'll scroll through a few here and when I find one I like, I'll click on the thumbnail to view it in more detail. When I'm ready to use it, I'll click download here on the right side and then specify a license usage for the photo. This is just a statement of how you plan to use the photo. Even if you stop subscribing to Elements in the future, your licenses will still be valid and you can continue using the items you've downloaded. When finished, I'll click add and download and my image selection will download. To get my ship photo, I'll just repeat these same steps and then jump back over to Keynote. The slide I'm working on here already has a built-in placeholder for an image on the right side. To use it, I'll click on this photo icon here in the lower right corner. A browse window will open inside of Keynote that I can use to find a downloaded image. I'll navigate to it and click to insert it onto my slide as you're seeing me do here. Keynote will drop it into the placeholder. Now it's time to add the other image I chose, but notice there isn't a built-in placeholder for it. No problem. To add it, simply come up here to the Insert tab at the top of the screen. Then click on the Choose menu and browse to insert the photo of your choice. Keynote will add it to the screen. The image will appear in a default location, but Keynote offers a ton of editing options to customize your images. First off, you can resize the image by clicking and pulling on one corner like you see here. I can also move it around the slide just by clicking and dragging it. The Arrange tab in the right sidebar here on the right side offers even more options to edit photos in Keynote. I can align the photo to the left side of the slide by clicking on this Align dropdown and selecting Left. Watch as Keynote snaps the photo into left alignment instantly. 
There are a variety of other options here, including custom sizing selections, rotations, positions, and more. Also, you can crop an image if you only want to use part of it on your slide. To do that, let's jump over to the Image tab here on the Format sidebar. Then I'll click on the Edit Mask button here. You'll see this menu up here with your image. Make sure you're working on the crop option here, and then click and drag on the slider to scale the crop as you're seeing me do here. To focus on a certain area of the image, you can click and drag to alter the alignment. When finished, click Done and Keynote will lock in the crop. That's it. In a few moments, we've transformed a blank slide into a beautiful side-by-side -side image display. Be sure to use images in your next presentation to make it engaging, stylish, and effective. Thanks for watching. Presentations often have a standard feel. Content flies onto one slide, drops into place, and vanishes as you move on to the next one. But with Apple Keynote, you can add stunning motion animations effortlessly. This technique is called Magic Move, a truly unique option to design your next slide deck. To set the stage, let's imagine that we're working with an image on a slide. We want to show a small thumbnail of it on one slide and a larger preview on the next. Conventional presentations would simply change from one view to the next. In Keynote, however, we can actually animate the image from one position to the next. It's stylish, it's fun, and it adds visual interest. Let's learn how. I'm working in the Business Development Keynote template from Envato Elements. As you can see, I have a slide with an image here. On the right side, I have some descriptive text. What I want to do on the next slide is show a larger preview of the image all by itself. A simple slide transition would seem choppy and quick. With Keynote, I can do better. That's where Magic Move comes in. The first thing I'll do is click on the slide thumbnail to select it, and then copy it to my clipboard by pressing Command-C. I'll paste it next in line here on the sidebar. Now, I can go ahead and rearrange the image into its new placement. Just like any other image, I can click and drag to move it around, or scale it by pulling on the corner. Okay, this placement looks great, and I'm ready to add the Magic Move animation. I'll go back to the first slide and click on the image to select it. In the Animate tab in the upper right, I'll click Add an Effect. Magic Move can be found right here at the top. I'll click on it and Kino will instantly display a preview. As you can see, the image smoothly animates from its starting point to its final destination. This makes for a far sleeker and professional looking Keynote presentation. You can do this with any slide element to add inspired style to your slides. Thanks for watching. I've finished building a presentation here and I want to email it to colleagues around the world. For this, I think it would be best to send them a video instead of the raw presentation file. This makes it more accessible. And it also keeps others from being able to edit and manipulate the slides. Overall, this provides better control over a finished keynote presentation. To export my presentation as a video, I'll come up here to the File tab in the upper left corner. As you can see, Keynote has an Export To menu here on the dropdown. I'll go ahead and click on it. A list of options will appear now. You'll see PDF, PowerPoint, Images, and more. The option I want for video is QuickTime, a widely available cross-platform video format. I'll go ahead and choose it. A menu will pop up called Export Your Presentation. On it, you'll have a few options to choose how you want your presentation video to play back. Since we're exporting rather than screen recording the slides, the default self-playing option is best, so I'll leave that unchanged. The next options relate to the slide timings. In other words, how long each slide stays on screen. This upper box relates to the full slide duration, while the second adjusts how long each item takes to animate on screen. A build is an instance where you would click to introduce new content if you were presenting it in person. Last up, we can adjust the video size and resolution in this drop down at the bottom. For me, I want to export at 1280 by 800, so I'll select custom. In the boxes, I'll enter in those values to set up my export. And finally, I can choose from three compression options to reduce file size while retaining quality. The default H.264 should work great. When I'm ready, I'll go ahead and click Next. Keynote will give a chance to name my video file and choose where to store it on my computer. I'll enter a name for the video here. I can also add a couple of optional tags, which are basically keywords that make files easier to locate on my Mac. Finally, I can choose a folder to save to and then click Export. Keynote will go to work creating a video file for my slides, as you're seeing here. When it's finished, I'll jump over and play a preview. It looks great, and it will be easier for everyone to access on their personal devices. Thanks for watching. Custom Keynote templates like those found on Envato Elements offer countless stunning layout and background options. They're well suited to all purposes and give your slides new styling simply not found in generic free templates. But sometimes you might want to go totally custom on the slide's background. That's where adding a background image comes in. Background images take your photos and push them behind your slide's content. Gone are the days of generic backgrounds. Instead, let a favorite photo do the work. I'm working in the Nixon template for Keynote, which I downloaded from Envato Elements. I'm creating a marketing presentation, and I want to build an introductory slide. 
my vision is to have a quotation overlaying a background photo. This will be visually stunning and sure to capture an audience's attention. And thanks to Keynote's features and Element's powerful templates, I can accomplish this in just a few clicks. To make it easy, the first thing I need to do is find a slide that fits my needs. Ideally, I need one with some text overlays built in and a blank background. Slide number six here looks promising, so I'll go ahead and click to preview it. Now it's time to begin work on our image background. If you have images of your own to insert, great. But if not, Envato Elements comes through again. Elements has recently added a stock photo section with thousands of amazing, royalty-free images available to subscribers. For a low monthly rate, you can unlock unlimited downloads, not only of professional keynote templates, but stunning photos to go with them. I'll jump over to Elements here, and as you can see, we've arrived in the stock photo section. The Elements catalog is robust enough to have images of virtually every description, so it's really just a matter of knowing what to search for. Since I want to feature a quote about success, I think a shot of a mountain climber might work great. I'll type this into the search box here, and Elements will return results. I'll browse through the options until I see something I like. To view in more detail, I can click on the thumbnail. Elements will open a larger preview with added descriptions and more. I really like the look of this image and think it would make an ideal background for my slide. I'll go ahead and click download here in the upper right corner. A pop-up menu will appear asking me to specify a license use for the photo. I can choose from prior options or enter a new use in the text box. Remember, even if you stop subscribing to Elements, you'll still be licensed to use files you downloaded from Elements for their original purpose. When I'm finished, I'll go ahead and click on add and download. Elements will go ahead and download the image file and I can jump back over to Keynote to start using it. Okay, I'm back in Keynote and I'm ready to add the background image. I'll go ahead and click on the Format tab here in the upper right corner. You can see these options here that really outline the look and feel of my slide. I'll select the background option and then click on this drop down. There are different fill options here and image fill is the one to use. I'll click on it. This choose option will appear and I'll click on it. In this pop-up, I can browse to where my image was downloaded on my computer and click to insert it. I'll also have some options here about how to scale the image. In other words, how to neatly fit it onto the slide. Scale to fill is perfect if you need a complete fill with no distortion. I'll go ahead and choose it. In a flash, Keynote will insert the photo on my slide scaled perfectly. All I need to do now is start rearranging the text placeholders on the slides to neatly overlay my image. I can drop in the quote and adjust the font and text color options to make it stand out a bit better. As you can see, in just a few clicks, I've created a stylish and totally custom background image layout for Keynote. Thanks for watching. Animations in Keynote are a perfect way to make your slides more interesting. Rather than simply flashing content on screen all at once, animations allow you to introduce things gradually. As I play through a simple presentation here, you can see that it's somewhat uninteresting. Part of this is because of the lack of animations. Viewers won't be sure where to focus first without knowing the proper order of the content. In Keynote, there are really two ways to add animations. The best option is to let the professionals at Envato Elements do the work by using a pre-built animated Keynote template. I'm working in the business development theme now. Now watch as I preview it. With animations already included, content flies on and off the screen in smooth motions. It's visually attractive, engaging, and ensures a good flow for the presentation. I can leave the default animations as they are, or I can fully customize them. Let's look at how. I'm back on one of the slides here and I want to mix up the animations. The first thing to do is select the slide object you want to animate. This numbered list is actually set up as two separate columns and I want to edit each one. I'll start off by clicking on the left text column to select it as you can see here. Animations are controlled up in the Animate tab which sits in the upper right corner of Keynote's menu. I'll go ahead and click on it and you'll see three new tabs. Build In, Action, and Build Out. Typically intro animations are built in so I'll go ahead and click on this option. As you can see, wipe is already applied to the left text box. I want to add something with a bit more energy, so let's click change here to explore some options. Keynote displays an entire list of different animations sorted by category. I know from experience that the flip effect puts a new spin on animation, so I'll try that out by clicking to select it. Keynote will display a quick preview and apply the effect to the text. I can also refine the animation even more by browsing the duration and direction menu below. I'll slow down the animation a bit to 1.5 seconds just by clicking on these arrows as you can see here. I'll also change the direction of the flip by clicking on this drop down. Let's try right to left. I could also change the order animations appear in here at the bottom. When I'm finished, I'll click preview here and Keynote will demonstrate all the changes I just made. To apply the same animations to the other text column, I'll click down here to select it and then just repeat the same steps. I'll choose flip, match the duration and direction and then press preview again. That's all it takes. 
As you can see, Elements templates already include advanced animations, but you're free to customize each one to fit your own needs. It's hard to think of a better way to make a presentation more attractive. Thanks for watching. Charts are a great way to help visualize data. Trying to give a presentation while simply talking about numbers is often not effective. It really pays to have a visual aid to support your points and boost understanding. And with Keynote's robust chart editing tools, you can create spectacular charts quickly. Keynote includes built-in chart templates that you can always use in any project. But if you're building out a data-driven presentation, it's best to use a professional template from Envato Elements. These custom Keynote templates include designs built especially for charting. If you plan to include multiple charts, these are the perfect choice. They're sure to communicate your data clearly and concisely. Audience eyes are drawn to colors and images, so use that fact to your advantage. I'm working in the public Keynote template, available now from Envato Elements. As you can see, there's a column chart here in the center of the slide. Now, this is just a placeholder chart, so these aren't actual values. I want to drop in my own data here to chart my total subscriber growth over the past few years. To change the chart data, I'll click once inside the chart to select it. You'll see this blue box appear that reads Edit Chart Data. I'll go ahead and click on that now. Kino will actually open up a little embedded spreadsheet app down here in the corner. This is the data that drives the chart. Now, all I have to do is swap out the example values with numbers of my own. For example, under January, I'll type in 13,000, in February, 17,000, and so forth. As I work, Kino will automatically scale the chart to match my data. When I'm finished, I'll close out of the spreadsheet window. Just like that, I've made the chart my own. But in Keynote, values aren't the only adjustment I can make to a chart. For example, I can manipulate it, just like an image. I can click and drag to move it around the slide, or even pull on a corner to make it larger or smaller. I can also change the design elements. To do this, I'll simply click on the chart to select it. As you can see, Keynote opens up a new chart sidebar with a list of options on it. If I want to change the font, for example, I'll simply navigate to the chart font group and switch to a more readable option. I'll also change the colors by opening the color chooser here. Elements Keynote charts include amazing color palettes. I can preview each one just by hovering over it with my cursor. Don't forget to click this arrow here to see even more options. There are plenty of other design and style options to explore when editing Keynote charts and you'll find most of them in this menu. Don't forget to spend time creating charts next time you're giving a Keynote presentation. They visually improve your slides and keep your audiences happy. Thanks for watching. Infographics are graphics used to visualize data. They're perfect for illustrating key points and ideas. When you're giving a keynote presentation, talking through numbers and data can quickly grow dull. If not for you, then your audience may struggle to engage, understand, and retain. That's why infographics are key to delivering successful data-driven presentations. Not only do they drive understanding, they also visually improve the appearance of your slides. Infographics come in all forms. Envato Elements offers a fine selection of infographic templates built to suit any situation. All you have to do is choose a template and drop in your own data. I'm working in the infographics keynote presentation here, and as I scroll, you can see the stunning options on each slide. These include not only traditional charts, but process flows, mind maps, and more. In my presentation I'm building, I want to create a simple process flow that highlights my company's offering. This slide looks great. It's clean, simple, and the columns illustrate the proportions of each step. To make my own infographic, it's really as simple as swapping out the placeholder text for my own. I'll start down here by changing out these titles at the bottom. For the first, I'll type Engage. In the next slot, we'll call it Study, then Plan, Execute, and so forth. Then I'll fill in the first descriptor text box under Step 1. I'll match the title and then type a brief description in the box. Of course, if I wanted blank space instead, I could simply delete the text boxes and move on. Then I'll just repeat these same steps, clicking in each text placeholder and adding my own. Finally, it's time to edit the text inside each column. It's a little tough to read since it's turned vertically, and I think it might actually look better blank. To empty out the columns, I'll click on the first text box. Then I'll press delete on my keyboard. The icon symbol can be removed in the same way. I'll jump forward here, having repeated these steps in the other three columns. I also added a title, as well as the descriptive text down here at the bottom. That's it. As you can see, Keynote and Elements make it easy to build custom infographics for your presentations in a breeze. Thanks for watching. Keynote presentations are the perfect way to promote your website or app. Dropping in a full slide screenshot is one way, but it's better to show exactly how your design looks on a real device. That's where device mockups come in. Device mockups are visual representations of tablets, computers, smartphones, and more. You can simulate a screen image and how it looks on a real device. To find professional mockup templates, let's turn to Envato Elements.
Elements offers professional device mock-up templates for Keynote, and you have unlimited access to them with a monthly membership. I'm using one called 13 Mockups for Keynote. I have it open here, and as you can see, most major types of device are represented. I like this template because it's easy to use with your favorite Keynote templates. All you have to do is paste the mock-up onto a slide. Let's say I want to showcase a website on a smartphone. The first thing I'll want to do is take a screenshot of the site on my phone. Then I'll copy it to my computer. I've already done that in the background, so now it's time to get to work building the mock-up. Let's scroll through our options here until we find one that looks right for us. This smartphone mock-up looks great, so I'll choose it. Now, down here in the lower right corner of the virtual screen, I'll click on this photo icon. Keynote will launch an Apple Photos browser screen where I can find the screenshot. I've already imported it, so it's right here ready for import. I'll click to select it, and Keynote will add it to the mock-up. That's it. In just a few clicks, I've created a spectacular visual representation of a website on a smartphone screen. Now all that's left to do is to add this to an existing presentation. I'll go ahead and open up a second Keynote window with my new presentation inside. This slide here describes the features of the website. I'd like to place the device mockup here in this open space on the left. To do that, I'll jump back over to the mockup slide. Transferring it over is as easy as copy and paste. Here though, I need to be careful. Remember that the screenshot and the phone outline are actually two separate objects. I need to select both to ensure that everything transfers over. I'll start by clicking down here on the phone itself. This selects the mockup, but not the screenshot. To fix that, I'll hold down Command on my keyboard and then click on the screenshot itself. Boom, both objects are now selected. To copy, I'll press Command C on my keyboard, then jump to my other slide. To paste it, I'll simply press Command V and the full mockup will drop onto the slide. With both objects still selected, I can click and drag to move the phone around on my slide to fit it in perfectly. Now, when I give my presentation, the audience will be treated to a beautiful look at the website just as it would appear in their hand. Thanks for watching. Custom Keynote templates from Envato Elements offer virtually unlimited options to customize your presentation, but these themes aren't the only way to make a slide truly your own. Sometimes it really pays to use a custom font. This moves beyond built-in text styles and enters a new world of design. Unique fonts are truly works of art, and you can make them part of your own Keynote projects. I'm working in a presentation here, and I'm looking for something different. I've added images and graphics, changed the layout and more, but I still want to expand my creativity on this slide. Custom fonts are a great way to do this. Envato Elements offers an entire section of stunning custom fonts. As I look at my slides, changing up the font style seems like the way to go. I'll jump over to the Fonts section on Elements and start browsing. As you can see, Elements offers thousands of fonts in multiple categories. Choose from serif, script, handwritten, normal, expanded, and more. For my presentation, I think a decorative design might work best. I'll click on the category here on the sidebar and Elements will filter my results. I can scroll down through the results and explore the different options. Each thumbnail presents a preview of the font in use. When I find one that looks promising, I can click to expand it. Elements will show me a larger preview, description, and the key download option. If I like it, I'll go ahead and click on download here in the corner. Elements will ask me for a license usage. This just describes how I intend to use that font. I'll choose an option here and click add and download. A zip file will download and I'll jump over and extract it to a new folder. Next up, I need to install my new font and get it ready to use. To do this on a Mac, I need to find and launch the Fontbook app. This is typically found in Launchpad's other folder or I can find it with Spotlight Search. I'll open it up and now it's time to add the font. To do this, I'll click on this plus icon on the menu bar. A file browser will open up. Here, I need to navigate to where my font file is stored. I'll click on one of the font files to select it and then choose open. Fontbook will import my new font and store it in the user section. That's it, installing a custom font is incredibly easy on Mac. Using it in Keynote is just as simple. I'll reopen my presentation here. Let's say I want to use my new font on this title text. I'll double click in the text box to select it. In the text sidebar here on the right, I'll come over to the font dropdown and click to expand it. Right on cue, my new font has been added right in alphabetical order. I'll click to select it and Keynote will instantly apply it to my text. It needs to be resized just a little. I'll move down to the font size arrows and scale it to fit perfectly. To apply the new font elsewhere in my presentation, I can simply repeat these same steps. Or I can add brand new text boxes and select the new font right from the start. As you can see, Mac, Keynote, and Elements make it super easy to add custom fonts to your presentations. Thanks for watching. Keynote presentations are really designed to be visual aids to your narrative. They're meant to help your audience follow along with your message and present supporting text and data. There's nothing worse than sitting through a presentation where the presenter simply reads the slides aloud. This is boring and it really wastes Keynote's potential. But that doesn't mean that you can't give yourself additional guidance when you're giving a Keynote presentation in front of a group. 
Presenter notes are visual aids for you, not the audience. They're on-screen notes and cues for you to read from and follow while keeping your presentation in its supporting role. And best of all, you can add them to any slide to make every presentation sound its best. I have a short keynote presentation here that I plan to share in front of an audience. I know better than to simply read the slides and reading from a separate note card doesn't look much better. Instead, I just want to build a simple outline for me to use for guidance when speaking. This will help me stay focused, on track, and avoid wandering off topic. To add presenter notes to a slide, I'll go up to the View tab at the top of the Keynote window. I'll click on the dropdown, and from the list of choices, go ahead and select Show Presenter Notes. When I do this, Keynote will automatically open a presenter notes box immediately below my slide. There, I can go ahead and type in notes to myself. It could be a full narrative script or just a few key ideas as you're seeing me add here. When I'm finished, I can simply advance to my next slide in the sidebar and repeat this process. Of course, I can always leave the notes field blank if I want. Once finished, it's time to make sure we can actually see presenter notes when giving the presentation. In the main keynote window, I'll come up here to the Play tab. This is the menu where you control the settings for playing back your keynote presentation. I'll click, and on the dropdown, I'll select Customize Presenter Display. Keynote will open its presenter view, which is the screen used when sharing slides through a projector. There's an additional new menu that pops up, as you can see here. On this menu, I can check through these boxes to specify exactly what I want to appear as I present each slide. Notice that Presenter Notes isn't selected by default, so I'll go ahead and check the box to activate it. That's it. As I advance through my slides in Presenter View, my helpful notes will be right there to guide me. And remember, these notes aren't visible to your audience. They'll simply be impressed by your incredible delivery without ever knowing notes are involved. As you can see, this is a quick and simple way to make your keynote presentations easier and better. Thanks for watching. Once you've built your keynote presentation, it's time to share it with an audience. Of course, you might choose to do this in person, but that's not your only option. Thanks to Keynote Live, you can share your slides in real time with anyone. Keynote Live is essentially an easy way to broadcast your presentation over the internet. Let's look at how to use it. I've finished my presentation here and I'm ready to share it. My audience is scattered all over the globe, so getting everyone together just isn't possible. Instead, I want to share it online. I'll come up here to the Keynote Live option on the menu and click on it. An option will appear, telling me that I need to move the presentation to iCloud. iCloud is Apple's online storage and sharing service, and it's needed for Keynote Live. I'll save it there and then click to continue. This next screen is a menu of options for sharing with Keynote Live. I can explore these to discover the sharing option that works best. Perhaps the simplest option is to just send viewers a URL. I can find this by clicking on More Options and then copying and sharing the URL. I also have the option to add enhanced security by requiring a password here. I highly recommend this. No matter how complex a web link may seem, sharing any confidential slides with Keynote Live will benefit from that extra security. I'll enter a quick password here. A final option is to invite viewers, where I have the ability to share the Keynote slides with only a select few people. This avoids having to send out a link and keeps your presentation contained to a smaller audience. Now, I'll go ahead and display a preview of what the audience will see as they watch my presentation on Keynote Live. As a presenter, I can see info such as the number of viewers here in the corner. It should be noted that Keynote Live does not support live audio. It will play presentation audio, so you might want to record a narration in advance and overlay it with your slides. Or, if sharing in real time, you can arrange a call-in number and navigate through. Keynote Live is a unique feature that makes sharing truly effortless. Use it next time you're presenting to an audience but can't find a room to share. Thanks for watching. In this course, you learned 15 of my favorite tips and techniques to spend less time in Apple's Keynote software. Even though this is one of my favorite presentation softwares to use, I always want to spend the least amount of time possible in it so that I can spend the most time actually preparing for what I'm going to say. These tips and techniques really help you skip ahead in the process and build confidence in what you're presenting. And as you saw, using those pre-built templates from Envato Elements is like a constant fresh source of ideas that you can use. Don't forget to use those templates as a head start versus producing things from scratch. Now it's your turn to go out and spend time in the software and really try these techniques out.